thought at the end of this experiment, I would know about nodding and now I want to move to Michigan. Good Lord, Emily. Let me whip out my dictionary here. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have a multiple sightings of the word mate. I just had to read a sex scene three times. Okay, confirmed. She is a vampire in STEM. Hello? Hello. Hi. Welcome to the video. My name's Carrie. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I don't know what the title of this video is going to be. I have a faint idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> my goal for this video is to read... Oh my goodness. I want to read some of my most anticipated slash the book community's most anticipated romances coming out. I have two that we definitely want to read, but I just got an arc for the new Allie Hazelwood. Um, I have a couple other books that I like haven't read and I've heard really great things about, so who knows? Basically, as of 30 minutes ago, uh, my husband went on a camping trip with his friends, and so I have the whole weekend. It's Friday. I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to myself to read. I'm gonna have a lot of fun. But before we fully dive into them, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a place to host your online presence. I have carriecakes.net for all of my like travel blogging stuff. It's super easy to set up. They have free templates so you can just like click, click, click and your website looks super professional and you can use it for pretty much anything because they have a comment section and ways to connect your social media accounts. They have email subscription lists and things like that for kind of a community building, but they also have analytics and monetization features, which are really good if you're trying to monetize your business, open an online shop, etc. So I just highly recommend Squarespace always if you're trying to start any kind of website. You can go right now to squarespace.com for free and play around with those templates. And then once you feel like, ooh, I want the public to see this, you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash Carrie can read and get 10% off of your first website or domain. So thank you as always for supporting this channel, truly. And what are we diving into? What is Squarespace actually supporting? Let's see. <laughs> the first book I'm absolutely going to read is Bride. And I think I want to start with that because I'm the most excited for it. So I feel like if I start another book, I'm going to just be thinking about reading Bride. So some background. People love and hate Allie Hazelwood. I don't know why. Like, I don't think any of her books inspire any kind of hatred. I'm not like an Allie Hazelwood hardcore fan, but I have enjoyed all of her books, like for better or for worse. I've laughed at all of her books. They seem like a good time. She seems like a lovely lady. So I'm going into this with nothing but excitement. And usually, um, if you don't know, so Allie Hazelwood usually writes romances coming from like women in STEM. So it's very much always like her characters are usually researchers or engineers or um recently she just wrote a young adult book that i actually really liked and she was a chess master now she's coming off of the the stem stuff but this is her first attempt at an adult fantasy she's doing like paranormal fantasy when i heard about this i lost my mind that was like a year and a half ago so i've been waiting let me read to you all i know is that there's a wolf on the cover. Like, I don't know anything else. So I'm going to read to you the Goodreads summary. Okay, here we go. A dangerous alliance. Oh, I'm already in. A dangerous alliance between a vampire... <laughs> Let me start over. A dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth into in this new paranormal romance. Misery Lark, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman in the Southwest, is an outcast. Again, if this is like vampires, werewolves, and cowboys, Allie, pick a lane. Her days of living in anonymity among the humans are over. She's been called to she's been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable, and their alpha, Lo Morlin, is no exception. He, <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these cold reads. He rules his pack with absolute authority, but not without justice. And unlike the Vampire Council, not without feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was, because Misery, has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience. Oh, oh, I didn't real. I thought this was like a peacekeeping. I thought this was like about diplomacy. This is a marriage. Okay. 
because misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances, and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she's willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers, even if it means a life alone in wear territory, alone with the wolf. Okay, it's 410 pages. It got released earlier this month in February. It already has about 55,000 ratings, 4.2 stars. Friends that I love and trust have said that the yearning is like <laughs> insane in this book. I know, I know, I know. So I'm excited for that. As far as what we're reading next, I don't want to make any promises here, so I'm just going to dive in right now. I have my book, I have coffee, this is decaf, but it's a placebo. I still feel wired when I drink this, so here we go. Bride. <laughs> okay, so we start... Let's get Louis facing the right way. We start with a prologue, and at first I was like, where is the sentence going? But I'll read it to you. This war of ours the one between the vampires and the wares, began several centuries ago with brutal escalations of violence, culminated amid flowing torrents of varied colored blood, and ended in a whimper of buttercream cake on the day I met my husband for the first time, which, as it happens, was also the day of our wedding. A solid start, first line from our leading man. <laughs> So yes, in this world, they have vampires, wares, aka werewolves, and humans, and apparently there's like a bunch of treaties in place to keep the peace, and one stipulation of that is that a werewolf and a vampire have to get married. I don't really know, but it seems like she's been married before. She said something about like, this isn't my first rodeo, and I feel like she's been married before, potentially with a human. I don't know, but either way they're very hostile towards each other and they met at the altar he just stares at her like he wants to kill her and doesn't say anything until she stumbles because she's an ally hazelwood protagonist and so she's clumsy and he catches her fall and then he says what i just showed you and off to the races i think that this is a little bit different it's not so far only through the prologue um not quite as over the top quirky funny as her other books and I think that works in its favor. I feel like if we had had just like the typical Allie Hazelwood writing style, just switching scientists with vampires, it wouldn't have worked. But this is like funny. Our character is a little bit like more cynical and sarcastic and honestly just like a little apathetic. She's sort of like, fuck this. Like I'm, people don't like me. I'm probably gonna get killed. It is what it is, you know? So I, I'm so far, I'm enjoying the change of tone, but it still has that funny feeling to it. There's still a humor. So off we go. I'm, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. So I, that was me reading the prologue. Now I'm reading chapter one and all of a sudden she works at a startup. Is she a woman in STEM? She is an engineer and a vampire. Wait, suddenly we're in an office setting and she pissed off another engineer because she like broke in through his firewall that he had made. What? <laughs> No, okay, so lost points for that one, but <laughs> what is happening here? Okay, so our girl wasn't married before. She was the human collateral. So right now, she is getting married to the werewolves for a peace treaty. But there's also another peace treaty between the humans, and you basically have to send a young child who is related to like the higher ups in the vampire world to live in the human world as like basically a hostage just to like make sure everybody keeps the peace. And so she kind of lived for 10 years as a kid with the humans. And so that's why she has a best friend who's human. That's why she is working in an office, whatever. So this just like isn't her first rodeo in terms of being a bargaining chip. Okay, so it's all political strategy. Basically, the vampires and the were the vampires and the humans were always really close, and the werewolves never had any contact with humans really, and that worked out well, I guess. Um, however, 
now there's a new human governor or something and they don't seem interested in working with the vampires they want to alliance ally ally with the werewolves and that completely changes the dynamic it's very strange apparently there's a brand new werewolf alpha so the head of the vampires is like something is up something is bad and we need to make sure that we are still all allied and so the only way to do that is to have a vampire werewolf wedding which they had had in the past successfully but then the last one the wedding was just like a bloodbath they haven't had one since and because they feel like everything's like very unstable right now and it's very likely that they could all go to war wedding time okay that's what's happening i'm not gonna get into spoiler territory with you but something that she learned about the our main character completely changed her mind she was going to walk away from this wedding and then she was like wait a second where do i sign so oh <laughs> We're on page 40, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a multiple sightings of the word mate. <laughs> so apparently they actually did like a, a full exchange. So she goes to the werewolf territory as his bride, but he had to send his mate. The alpha's mate has to be sent to the vampires. So maybe they aren't gonna have a mating bond snap into place because it already has with somebody else and i don't need to read about it hello darkness my old friend but that feels too good to be true so mm. okay confirmed she is a vampire in stem <laughs> we love an author that commits to the bit okay <laughs> The plot thickens, so 17% update. I'm really enjoying the way that Ali Hazelwood is writing. As always, it's in first person and a lot of the story is just our main character talking to herself. And so it still has that just like very dry sense of humor, but it's not over the top, which I feel like is a lot of people's issues with Ali Hazelwood is that the characters are just overly quirky and funny this is very different it's toned down but it's just clever and funny so far we've had an annoying little sister who could be anywhere between the ages of 3 and 13 because our main character doesn't know how to age a child and that's totally me I was like a babysitter my whole life I worked at a daycare like I've been around kids a lot and I do not know how to tell their ages I'm like if you can walk you're one if you can hold a conversation, you're five. And if you can hold a conversation that engages me, you're 12. And that's like all I can do. So when she said that, she's like, between three and 13, I was like, I get this girl. Now there's an element of mystery involved. There might be a missing person. And the one clue we have might lead us toward werewolf territory. So this is different than anything Ali has done and I'm really into it. So far, like 17% of the way through, we haven't had, we've had one conversation between the couple um, and he's basically like, listen, this was a business deal. Let's stay out of each other's way. And he's trying to figure out like, why doesn't your dad love you? <laughs> because your dad sent you off to live with the humans. And now your dad sent you off to live with the werewolves. And also like a regularly occurring thing in this girl's life is that she has assassination attempts. Like people, anti-vampire extremists are always trying to kill her. So that's a thing. Here we are. I'm enjoying it. Thoroughly enjoying it. I'll give you an update soon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm only at 24% and I'm I'm just having a good time. Like the action hasn't really picked up yet, but I think I really understand this character. We haven't seen any of her husband, <laughs> but um I don't know. I'm I'm having a good time so far. I wonder how she's going to fit this alleged incredible yearning tension in the next 75%. But I'm here. I'm sorry, Miss Allie Hazelwood, but you putting this sentence, look at this page, look at this page, all by itself, what are you saying, 
Allie. She, for those of you who are unaware, Allie loves a giant man. We're talking about literally calling her male protagonists the size of a refrigerator. Um, so I was kind of waiting for this. He does have big hands, but I thought that's just because he's a werewolf. But this is just, she's toeing the line. She's holding it in so far. We're only at 25%. She's gone so far. Allie, girl, keep it together. Allie's out here making me eat my words. When I said that she wasn't talking about how gigantic this guy is, um, she's doing it in a completely different way. So this time, I... I don't know. I don't know if this is him or not, but we meet our first wolf and I assume it's him. And um, she's talking about how like for vampires, the lo the bigger the fangs are, the more powerful powerful you are. Same goes for the wolf, right? And so his canines, <clears throat> this wolf, this wolf's fangs could win contests, rule civilizations, get their owner engaged, married, and very much late at any vampire party. And they could shred me into M&Ms. What? Wait. Shred me into M&M's. <laughs> anyway, he's got big teeth too. Big feet, big teeth. I'm a sucker for not only the cute kid, but also the protective sibling trope. And we have them put together. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I think it is moving incredibly slowly. Not incredibly slowly, but just like I... I feel like there hasn't been a lot of action yet. I feel like it's just about to start, but... <laughs> okay, I'm officially 54% of the way through, and the werewolf guy just took a run, and it talked about how he looked so healthy because he was out in the fresh air, and he exercised, and that made me realize that I haven't moved in about four hours. So, I'm going to go take a walk. I'm enjoying it. I think that it's a little like, it's definitely we know what's going on. There's a lot of dramatic irony and I just kind of want them to get the show on the damn road, but um, I'm enjoying the plot. I think it's very clever what's happening and I really enjoy their banter. Like they, I just, again, I always love how Allie Hazelwood writes her dialogue. And this, like I said earlier, it's quite toned down. Um, so even though they are being very, funny. Um, it's still a kind of realistic conversation. I say this lovingly, she's a little bit less dumb than her previous protagonists. I feel like even though she has a lot of these brilliant women, they also are like super stupid <laughs> sometimes. Representation for us stupid women, but she just seems to like be at a consistent level. Like her character is consistent rather than previous characters that are like not let's just say so yeah i am really enjoying it i have a feeling now is when everything is going to ramp up and i need to go take a walk before that happens because i know that i will not leave once thing once stuff starts going on so anyway i will see you guys after a little bit of a walk okay We're back from our walk. I do feel better. Always try to get outside and breathe fresh air and drink water. <laughs> Just a general mental health reminder. I got myself some Kimbop. Just had a man in the elevator tell me that this wasn't enough for my dinner because people like to randomly speak English to me sometimes and they just say strange things. <laughs> so for me, this is plenty. So I'm going to have my kimbap and I'm going to continue. As I said, I'm at 54%. I feel like the plot starts now. I've had so many people message me being like, I can't wait to see your vlog of this because I have so many questions and I don't really have questions yet. So I just, I'm just ready to go. So, okay, I will catch you soon, but I don't know when I'm gonna stop. Like this book is definitely one that's pulling me in now. So I think that I will let it take me. If I come up for air, I will talk to you, but if not, see ya. Not our male love interest pulling a Feyre. <laughs> Allie finished it. Um, 
about 11 hours since starting, <sighs> finished the book. What do I have to say? So overall, <laughs> I think I, I actually really liked the plot. I liked that there were a lot of side characters um, and I like the themes of like friendship and belonging. Like overall, I just think that she created a good world even though there were some plot holes. My complaint is that I felt like the romance was kind of insta-lovey. Like it was sort of set up as like she's never had really any love or even any like warm kind feelings shared with anyone other than maybe her brother for like a tiny bit and her friend Serena. So her like having absolutely no, she, she doesn't even like hug Serena, right? Like she's not a physical touch person. Jumping straight into a lot of physical touch um, was a little jarring. I would have liked a little bit more of a lead up into that, but I did just like the just all the dynamics. I really liked them. I did see all of the twists coming pretty much, um, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved Alex. Alex can get his own, <laughs> his own book. I loved him. And yeah, I will say that like this was my first introduction into the Omegaverse. People, people mentioned that and I was like, what the, like, do people not know what alpha and beta means? Like, haven't we all watched Twilight? And I realized that there's some other, like, mechanical parts of the Omegaverse that I didn't know. I didn't need that in the book. I understand that it's, like, a thing. Didn't need it, but it was there. I processed it. Um, but, yeah, I would say that I was, I was just, like, a little bummed out by how, like, instant and intense the love was but I still really like the story. So if you have been interested in trying an Allie Hazelwood book, but you don't read contemporary romances, you like fantasy or paranormal romances, um, I would still definitely give this a try. It was just like easy to read, easy to understand, fun. I thought like the last chapters were a little too much for me. Could have had less of that. I didn't really love the dirty talk, but um, I think she, hit exactly what she set out to create. Um, so really it was just like my taste <laughs> that didn't match certain parts of the book. But overall, I wasn't let down. It was a good time and I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna like stretch and walk around. Um, and so now we have the issue of deciding what I'm gonna read tomorrow. So I happen to have two arcs. My first arc is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I also just got the new, the arc for the new Allie Hazelwood, her other like contemporary romance called Not In Love. So I could read that. But I also have um, another book that I haven't downloaded yet, but I might buy is Truthfully Yours. I've heard really good things about that. So I'm going to put a poll up on my Instagram and you guys can choose which one I read next. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So let me know your thoughts on Bride. I know a lot of you guys have read it already. See you tomorrow. Thanks for being with me for this one, okay? Bye. Hello, a new day. Good morning. I, it's so dark. I actually went for a walk in the morning. Also, some person is doing construction right outside of my house, so I'm gonna be quick. But I went for my morning walk already, so I did get my exercise for the day. Now we just need to hydrate. Bride checked off the list. It was simple. It wasn't mind-blowing, but it just scratched an itch and I really liked the characters. I will say I didn't like the smut. Normally, I'm like, I can deal with Ali Hazelwood or like, how do I normally feel? I don't know how I normally feel. No, you know what? Yeah, her smut usually is kind of a little too intense for me. Just the dirty talk, man. Don't talk to me like that. Um, but so, but overall, like, it, it was very easily, like, if that's not your thing, but you still like cute, loving relationships with people, you can still totally read it and kind of, mm, over the smut. Next up, by far, but what was, what was the actual outcome of the 
voting. 66%, so not even close. By far, 66% of you wanted me to read Funny Story. Okay, so Funny Story hasn't been released yet. It's coming out April 23rd, so it only has about 2,000 ratings, but right now it sits at a 4.5, but who knows. This is a shimmering, joyful new novel about a pair of opposites with the wrong thing in common. What? Daphne always loved the way her fiance Peter told their story, how they met on a blustery day, fell in love over an errant hat, and moved back to his lakeside hometown to begin their life together. He was really good at telling it, right up until the moment he realized he was actually in love with his childhood best friend, Petra. Peter and Petra, ooh. All right, which is how Daphne begins her new story. Stranded in beautiful Waning Bay, Michigan, without friends or family, but with a dream job as a children's librarian that barely pays the bills, and proposing to be roommates with the only person who could possibly understand her predicament, Petra's ex, Miles Nowak. Also, I had a friend growing up named, well, I'm not gonna say her first name, but M. Novak, so I absolutely will call him Novak at some point, I'm so sorry. Scruffy and chaotic with a penchant for taking solace in the sounds of heartbreak love ballads, Miles is exactly the opposite of practical, buttoned-up Daphne, whose co-workers know so little about her, they have a running bet that she's either FBI or in witness protection. The roommates mainly avoid each other until one day, while drowning in their sorrows, they form a tenuous relationship and a plan. If said plan also involves posting deliberately misleading photos of their summer adventures together, well, who could blame them? But it's all for show, of course, because there's no way Daphne would actually start her new chapter by falling in love with her ex-fiancé's new fiancé's ex, right? Uh, oh no, it's roommates and fake dating. Oh dear. So, yeah, I have no, again, like, kind of with Allie Hazelwood, she's just a fun time. Um, I'm not, like, a ride or die. Even, well, I'm close. I'm close to ride or die, because I just feel like I like her as a person. I'm kind of the same with Emily Henry. I'm not ride or die. I've read Book Lovers, and I really liked it. I read People We Meet on Vacation, and I really didn't. Did I read more? I haven't read Happy Place yet. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just interested to see where this goes. So um, that's what we're doing today. Welcome. If you are new here, I have a vlog channel, Carrie Cakes, which is always linked down below. So I'm actually filming for that as well. So I'm going to make a make a breakfast, make breakfast, um, and then dive in. So I will catch you guys after I have consumed some protein. All right, I'm going to make some scrambled eggs with feta and spinach. Oh, all right. I will see you on the couch. <laughs> God, not my lack of reading comprehension. I thought we were starting in the 1800s for a second. <laughs> Where did that come from? Okay, anyway, rocky start. Here we go. <laughs> okay, we're meeting our characters directly post breakup for both of them. Because remember, they've both been broken up with by Peter and Petra. And so they moved in together. And Daphne is passive aggressively scrolling through Petra's social media account while in the next room, Miles is blasting. Oh, my so loud. And it's just, I can see it. The scene is set. The scene is set. <laughs> Good Lord, Emily. <laughs> Let me whip out my dictionary here. Hold on, what does it actually mean? Okay, you learn something new every day. No! <laughs> but really, is there a is there a baby out there named Renesme? Other than the Renesme, because she's clearly a real baby. Please tell me you know someone named Renesme. <laughs> Okay, 15% of the way through, we just set up the whole fake dating thing. I love fake dating specifically when it's like, we need a wedding date, I need a plus one. I'm digging it, I like their banter. She's a child librarian. The way that, I don't know, the way that she describes like her life. I always like Emily Henry's characters. They feel like kind of fleshed out human beings and I am enjoying Daphne, but we know nothing about Miles. We literally just found out that he has a job. <laughs> so I will continue, but I'm enjoying, so. <laughs> She's reading to the kids in the library and Miles shows up 
And he's like, wow, that was amazing. And she's like, yeah, I can read since I was six. <laughs> Somehow, it is already time for our 50% update. This is a relatively short book. I'm on page 191. What do I have to say? It's just kind of a feel-good story. There's a bunch of side characters that I really like. There's her coworker. There is Miles' little sister. They're all just kind of like slowly healing and being nice to each other and exploring this quaint town in Michigan. It's just been quite feel-goody. There's been like one or two steamy scenes, but those have been nice, <laughs> I guess. Um, and like they didn't seem super out of the blue, um, which I really enjoy. My only thing is that their dialogue, Emily Henry's really good at writing dialogue, but sometimes I think she's too good and she goes for like a little bit longer than necessary. I could have shortened a couple of the scenes that we're having where they're just like quipping back and forth. But other than that, it's it's cute. And I feel like, again, I've hit the 50% mark. So now I feel like things are gonna start to rev up. We have possible parent issues. I'm just really excited even more than like seeing the couple officially get together because it's a romance and we know that's gonna happen. More than that, I'm excited to see the original cheating couple, the couple that like broke both of their hearts. I'm excited to see them lose it. Peter and Petra, I'm coming for you. I'm excited for that. So it's also completely unexpectedly making me really hungry because Miles um, works at a winery and he's like the buyer so he sources all of the ingredients for their kitchen so he's like bringing her along to all the farms and like teaching her how to make goat cheese pesto pizza and I'm just sitting here like ugh, starving so actually I have grilled veggie ricotta sandwich and some soup on the way which I'm really excited about I will be putting that on Emily Henry's bill because <laughs> I will update you maybe when I finish. I don't know. We'll see. Funny story. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's like just getting really juicy. Like there's drama and I'm sitting here like shoveling soup into my mouth. Shit's going down. Shit's going down. <laughs> I just had to read a sex scene three times to understand the dynamics. I'm pretty sure she had to take off her pants twice. If you've read a funny story and we're talking about like the first time that they finally get together, let me know how many times she had to take her pants off because I'm trying to I'm trying to reread. <laughs> Was there a costume change in the middle? I'm really confused. Um so far so good, but now I'm just that kind of took me out. I was like, "What? What?" So <laughs> let me know. Finish the book very unexpectedly now want to move to Michigan. Who would have thought at the end of this experiment I would know about nodding and now I want to move to Michigan. <laughs> Books are life-changing to say the least. Um, it was cute. It was cute. I think this really had a focus on family drama and like trauma from having shitty parents. So there were a couple bits where like I just can't take too much deadbeat dad content because it just pisses me off and there's a deadbeat dad in there that's quite deadbeat. Um, but other than that I just really love the side characters it wasn't like obscenely steamy. I actually really like Emily Henry's smut, or at least in this one I do, um, mainly because they don't say fucking weird things to each other. I think in the beginning he like overused the word sexy <laughs> a bit, um, but then he, he chilled out, so it's okay. But um, yeah, I just thought it was wholesome, the stakes weren't incredibly high like it just felt like truly a very realistic romance it didn't feel over the top at all it was just quaint and sweet and very kind of 
small towny it takes a village to raise a couple um great so highly recommend it definitely felt very summery so i would read it as the weather warms up wherever you are it is not the time to be going out for cute little walks and bike rides and kayaking unfortunately here but yeah man what i had a great time and i actually think i only have time to read two books i thought i was going to read three um for this experiment but i really like the contrast <laughs> of bride a su uh, supernatural paranormal romance and then a small town little rom-com really appreciate those two so i'm going to end the video here but it was a smashing success i enjoyed both of them thoroughly i'm kind of pissed that i didn't save them as i usually do for an airplane those i think especially like actually both of them would have kept my attention i i read them both each in a day so um highly recommend both of those and thank you again to squarespace for sponsoring this all the information will be down below but you can go to squarespace.com slash carrie can read to get 10 percent off of your first website or domain other two that i was going to read if you're looking for something i got the arc of not in love by ali hazelwood so that is something that i that's coming out like late summer i think so i might hold on to that because i do actually have a long plane ride in between that time um but i've also heard really good things about truthfully yours um it doesn't have a lot of buzz on like the different review sites but i've heard about it from some of my friends and just seen it online vaguely so i would also recommend that i don't know anything about it other than i plan to read it so that's what's going on um let me know your thoughts if you've read any of them once again let me know about that that scene where was she, was she wearing two pairs of pants like i'm not sure um if you've read funny story <laughs> let me know but yeah i will not be diving further into the omega verse and i haven't i haven't written off michigan anyway yeah just sending you love always thanks for being around for this and i will catch you guys next time okay um let me know if you want to see anything from me i have finished the script for the mortal instruments continuation of my plot summaries i will be filming that hopefully next week editing it up for you and hopefully by the end of march this is my promise to you the end of march you will see a continuation of my plot summaries very excited about that so i'll see you then god i love reading all right i'll see ya bye <laughs>